In today's video, we're going to talk all about great toe extension and plantar fascia loading. So this video is for you if uh, you get any kind of foot pain or calf uh, tightness. If we don't have good extension through our big toe, then we're not able to create a good contact with the ground. And our great toe extension actually is what allows us to fully extend the hip. Uh, so it's really important in running to be able to control that great toe extension. So we're going to not just look at passive mobility or the ability of the toe uh, to move with assistance, but we're also going to look at active uh, mobility. So we can actually control that range of motion uh, to decrease the stress on the passive structures of the foot. So first, we are going to use, um, a, you, you can use weight plates at home or a stack of books is a lot easier. And you're going to first find the tripod of your foot, so equal pressure on the heel, base of the big toe, base of the little toe. And then I want you to raise your big toe up as much as you can, maintaining that contact with the big toe mound. So if I lose that, then I'm no longer mobilizing this great toe joint. So I'm going to find what height I can get actively and then see with my finger, can I go more passively? So can I get myself um, a little bit further with some help? And then I'm going to slide my book or my plate in to block it. Okay, so we want to find our passive end range while maintaining that big toe mound down. So from here, I'm going to push my big toe into the book or the block similar to as if I was pushing on a gas pedal with my whole foot. So if the block wasn't there, then I'd be flexing my big toe or bringing it back to neutral. Again, key is to maintain that big toe mound, otherwise I've lost that angle and I'm no longer at end range. So I'm going to hold for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to try and actively lift my big toe. Don't worry about the little toes here. Actively lift my big toe towards the top of my foot. So I'm trying to lift the toe off of the book. You might not get any um, motion and that's okay because we're at end range. If you get more than, you know, a couple millimeters of motion, so if I use a shorter book and I'm able to really come off of it, then my books are too low and I might want to slide another one in there. So I'm going to go through this three to five times, 10 seconds in each direction. And again, as I get better, I might be able to increase the height of the book and increase the angle here at that big toe. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is the alignment of the big toe as you lift. So working on that toe spread throughout, and as I lift my big toe, I'm thinking about um, keeping it aligned with the inside of my arch. So if it's coming across my foot, then I might use my finger to just help it along so that I'm mobilizing the toe in alignment, building that strength in alignment so that when I'm running, I can use it in alignment. So once you do that a couple times on each side, we're going to load the plantar fascia. So oftentimes when we don't have good uh, foot control or foot stability, we tend to over grip with our toes and that can lead to plantar fascia pain as well as calf tightness. So now we're going to load the plantar fascia um, to be able to build that strength and capacity in the plantar fascia. So that's the tissue on the bottom of the foot. So you're going to come in a tabletop position and you're going to tuck your toes under and I want to make sure that you, you want to make sure that you're stacked right over that big toe and you're not curling out to the side. So we want to stay nice and stacked and trying to keep those toes nice and spread. And then the first movement is to try and drive that big toe mound down. Okay, so we're trying to load that angle we just worked on. And then from there, once that big toe mound's down, almost like we're trying to push through the floor, and then we can rock back and load that position. If you don't get that big toe mound down first, 
You're just gonna get most of that through your knees and hips. So we wanna drive that big toe mound down and then come back. You can hold for a few seconds. Maybe you notice a difference side to side. And then if you really wanna increase the load and that feels okay, then you'll hover your knees and in the same position, you'll rock back. Okay, so now we're adding a little bit more body weight, which will increase the load. And you can do kind of eight to 10 reps of that. So this is a great way to build that mobility, strength and control. Uh, this is an, these two exercises are ones that I would do on either your non-run days or at the end of the day versus right before your run. This is a little bit more aggressive to the tissue and so it'll, uh, it, it will give you time to kind of recover in between. Let me know if you have any questions and give it a go.